bags under my eyes. light it is not dark in my room okay okay a few things we finished Miyako Kawakami's All the Lovers in the Night quite a fast read did not expect to finish it so quickly it's about this editor who joins a new company after not so much liking her old position and then falls in love with a man and doesn't um, allow herself to fully develop a relationship with him. It just becomes this sort of thing where they meet for coffee and just talk for hours on end without really getting anywhere or being able to express their feelings for each other. I think I'm in this like run-in of like detached characters. Yeah, after reading Leave Society by Tao Lin and now reading, which, which is my first Kawakami book, um, I've always wanted to read Breast and Eggs and uh, her other work, but this is my first, thanks to an ARC from NetGalley. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. They feel, most of it is comprised of dialogue and it mostly feels like conversations that you would have with your friends. Just like there's this intimacy, this like nothingness. And there's so much of like the nothingness in the conversations that you have with your friends that are so comforting at times. Like in the moment, you don't really think about it, but like all the text messages that eat up so much storage, like these nothing texts, these like those memes, everything that you send, stupid shit that you send to your friends. In the end, it does mean something. There's this like immense intimacy that comes with all of that. Kawakami does a wonderful job of imitating that through the conversations she has with her narrator and the boy she really likes. Really enjoyed it. My first and uh, not my last. I will definitely be reading more of her work. I wish it wasn't my first. In a way, it sort of feels like Kawakami has earned this right to be able to write a book about writing. The idea of editing and proofreading and what makes a perfect novel, what the impossibility of the perfect novel and I feel like when writers talk about writing that's when you know that they're on their like third or fourth book like they're allowed to talk about that stuff because they've done it like through the first second book so that's the only thing I wish I wish this this wasn't my first I wish I'd read something but you know ARC can't complain if anyone else is reading Kawakami and is a Kawakami reader, would definitely love to hear your thoughts on her as a writer. Moving on, some updates. We are in the middle of Time is a Mother by Ocean Fung. I am going way too fast. I'm moving way too fast in this. I need to slow down and savor them because they're like really, really good. We're dealing with trauma, queer identity, death, what it means to love a father, all these great things, what it means to Vietnamese. Although I don't think I've gotten a lot of Viet so far. I feel like Night Sky with Exit Wounds definitely has more Viet in it. This one, not so much. Once I finish, I'll definitely be listing some of my favorite moments, lines. Ugh, utter beauty in this one. Absolutely gorgeous. There's one poem where it's a list of the things that his mom bought like through an Amazon wish list throughout the months. It's quite sad. Gorgeous stuff. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. We are also in the middle of Sheila Hetty's Pure Color. I just started this like a day ago. I'm already almost done. Probably because it's in these like really snappy excerpts. I am loving this. It's about Mira 
Okay, but the way this book opens is the way that the world opens, how the Bible begins, how God has formed this earth, and the idea of the world being a first draft, and how each individual life, our lives on earth, are just first draft. And there isn't a second chance to like, which is like interesting because we also have a detached character, you know, linking my reading here from Tao Lin, detached character, this idea of people as novels, Kawakami, this idea of how there is no such thing as a perfect novel, that there's mistakes everywhere, no matter how much you read through it. And here, this idea of life being a first draft, this idea of writing, oof, loving this like, I should be teaching a creative writing 101 class or a reading class of some, a literature class of some sort. I am, I'm doing pretty good. And all unintentional, did not really expect to read all of these together intentionally. The way the world works, pure magic, pure color. Anyway, Nita, she falls in love with a woman that opens up her body in some way where uh, she's experiencing a lot of feelings because her father passes away and I'm going to stop there because the rest is like utter what the fuckery in this like gorgeous way. I really don't want to spoil it for anybody and I feel like anyone who picks this up should go into it blind. It's just so wicked and wonderful and beautifully rendered throughout. If anybody, this is my first Sheila Hetty book. I've always wanted to read How How to Be Alone or something like that, Lonely Person, something like that. And not sure if this is her style because I am absolutely in love. I think by far this is like my favorite book of 2022. Like nothing I've ever read. It's incredibly beautiful. There's almost like a timeless nature to it that I absolutely adore. I think I might finish it tonight. I really can't stop putting it down. There was this moment at work today where I hid in the storage closet and like read for a bit because like I couldn't put this down for some weird reason. It's not like a page turner, like a thriller or anything, but it's it's just so rich in beauty and detail that I haven't seen or read before through this like particular perspective but also a detached character Mira um, in the beginning and now she's like being open to all of these feelings that are coming at her absolutely gorgeous and we have our last supposedly book depository haul all the way from Australia it took like two months to get here it is are you ready for this a very expensive copy of Breakfast at Tiffany's because I am in a weird Truman Capote mood. I My first Capote book was Summer's Crossing, Summer Crossings. thought it was so beautifully done. Just like upper middle class socialites, the melodrama of it all. Just like these, de he just knows how to like detail things, moments, ideas, feelings. They're just so, he's a beautiful writer. I tried to read In Cold Blood and could not get into it for some reason. I think I just read it at the wrong time, but it was like a snooze fest for me. Sorry. And I have early short story collection. It's a really cute cover with like a drawing of a dog on it. And there's a foreword by Hilton Alls, which is at home in LA. I think I'm gonna ask my brother to send it to me in the near future, but these are my, it's part of my summer reading list some Capote. I've, you know, I've seen the film, not actually read the book. And look at this cute Penguin classic cover. I can't go wrong with Penguin classics. They're so adorable. I've been like watching his interviews and they're just like, he's one of those people that I could just listen to for hours because he has notes on everything and like life people, gossip, at the same time, he'll say things that are completely unexpected and incredibly funny. Yeah, just been watching his like Dick Cavett interviews. Um, really been enjoying those. I don't know why. As I work, other updates. I just found out that John Waters released a new book, a novel, his first, which is 
surprises me, but as he says, he likes to try new things. He's like 80 something years old. If he does LSD at 80, 80 years old, he'll write a novel at 80 years old. And uh, yeah, Liar Mouth, a feel bad romance as it's being advertised. I requested an ARC for that. So hopefully I get that. I requested another book. Oh, I requested the new Otessa Moshfeg book, but not quite sure if I'm gonna get that. Not quite sure how NetGalley works, really. I'd imagine it'd, it'd be like bots, you know, who are behind all this sending, like looking over requests and then like approving them. But I think it's like an actual person that, yeah. Anyway, excited for that because I, it's nice to have free books. Not gonna complain. I love a book and if it's free, it's for me. That's enough talking. Yeah, hope y'all have a beautiful Monday. Let me know how you're doing and what you're reading because I love adding books to my endless list. Ooh. If anyone needs a TV rec, I'm watching Severance right now. Really digging it. It's like a cross between The Truman Show and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. In terms of like themes, dark humor, it's pretty great. It's like filmed in this super brutalist building as well. So just like the tone of it as well is really interesting. It's one of those shows that like creeps under your skin and kind of fucks with you. It's been fun. I'm on like episode four, really enjoy that. I've also been watching Pachinko cause that was a fun, great book, really great family saga. And I'm watching Atlanta because um, I think this is like the best season. It has the, it's this season with the best writing, just about black issues set in contemporary society and really tackling it. It's just so well done. Just like, it's, it makes you think with its sort of like magical realism and oddity. That's as far as television goes. Movies? Does anyone want movie updates? I watched my second David Cronenberg film, Scanners. That was wild. It's about these special people who have this ability to like read minds, control minds, pull trauma in and out of people's minds. Also great. The third act, it just goes in some directions that you wouldn't expect and it's like pretty wild. My first Cronenberg film was Cosmopolis because of the Don DeLillo book. I love Don DeLillo. I've only read two of his books though. Cosmopolis and White Noise, both great. Just like settles into that dystopian world with like philosophical inquiries. Watch Scanners because of the new Cronenberg film that's coming out uh, in a few months. So that's exciting. I should do a wrap, a reading wrap up for April, but I don't know. Like I've, pre I've talked extensively about all the books already. So I'm not quite sure if it'll, if it's effective. Yeah, um, I'll think about it. Hope we're all reading. Reading's fun. Reading's great. I really need to like, I have way too aesthetic thumbnails and I hate to break it with something like this. I don't know, it's just not my style, but I do it anyway, just in case. <laughs> Hi, it's Tuesday and I am so tired. Are these bags under my eyes? I don't know. I don't know why I'm so tired. I went to bed early last night, got a good amount of sleep, seven hours, almost eight, 7.5. Just falling asleep like near the end of work, then like nearly fell asleep on the bus and almost missed my stop while going to get groceries. And then I was just like, you know what? I need coffee. So I went to Starbucks, got myself a cold brew, vanilla sweet cream cold brew, and I'm still so tired. I don't know what it is. And I have like this like aching, very subtle migraine going on. But when I was at the Starbucks, we finished this. Um, I think it's only been like three days, but I finished this. I did not expect to finish this so quickly. 
I just could not put it down. I don't know why. I absolutely loved this. Weird, sweet, sad, weird, very weird. There, I don't even want to spoil it for you because it's so fantastical and beautiful and this like very humanity focused way. Looks at themes of existence, what it means to be created, who is the creator, loss, love, uh, the end of love, what different parts of love mean to the individual self, nourishment. This book feeds the soul. It is the soul. If anyone else has read this, please, 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 let's talk about it. I need to mention here that before reading Tao Lin's Leave Society, I just like binge watched a bunch of interviews that Tao Lin did to tour his book. And he had an interview with Sheila Hetty. And I believe it was a... What is that? What is that? I believe it was about also Sheila Hetty's new book. Tao and Sheila, I think, are friends. And when they were talking about it, about her new book, while talking about his book, she had mentioned that, like, there were similarities between his and her book. Tao got, like, weirdly defensive and they're like, no, they're completely different. And I was just like, oh, that was weird. But in actuality, there's quite a bunch of similarities between the ideal of the novel creation, this idea of drafts, this idea of people as books, and how do we exist in this world of drafts, this idea of uh, continually forming a draft to head towards this complete, perfect work when none of it is, um, technical difficulties. I was recording and my phone just stopped because I don't have any space on this phone, even though I have iCloud storage. I don't understand. Absolutely loved this. Going to binge watch a bunch of Sheila Hetty interviews about this book now because I definitely want to know the root of it all. It is definitely a pandemic book. Touches on themes of the individual self. Ideas of the individual self after existing online for so long. I can't stop thinking about this book. I'm going to think about it for the rest of the week. I am so tired. I am going to eat, watch Severance. So tired. My next read, while I'm still, while my requests are still pending um, for NetGalley, which I don't think I'm gonna get because it's been like two days. No, it's been a day. I'm going to read Franny and Zoe. This will be a reread. Uh, reading this for research. Excited to see what it offers in this day and age. Yeah, I haven't read it since 2018. I reread this one out of all Salinger books. For some reason, I don't know what it is. I think it's just like sibling relationships and like this huge ass argument that they have between each other and just like that level of understanding, like family-based, friend-based, and just like as a person in sibling relationships and arguing with each other. Don't know what that says about me and my own sibling relationships. We're fine, we're fine. We're totally fine now, I guess. But uh, yes, going to reread this as my next read. Look at this, this green, no, not the same green. And I'm still finishing up Time as a Mother. So I've been reading like a poem a night and that has slowed things down. But we are almost done with that as well. Yes, uh, hope everyone doesn't have much of a tired Tuesday as I did. And yeah, take care of yourself.